Good evening and welcome to Sports Federation TV. I'm your host, Alton Davids. As you know, the show is about all kinds of sport. There are 73 different codes of sport registered in South Africa. We try and spend a little bit of time on each code of sport every week. So today, we've got four different segments. One, looking at squash. We've got some exciting news in football. We launched uh, the Liverpool Football Academy. We'll be chatting boxing and there'll be a karate insert right at the back of the show. Don't go away, we've got lots to talk about. Before we get there, let's join Rodney. You well, Rodney? I'm very well, thanks, Elton. Good, thanks for joining us. A young man who has a list of credentials. Rodney, take us through some of your achievements over this last uh, <laughs> few years. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been playing serious squash for about 20 years, about two decades. Um, started Pretoria Boys High, found the game walking past the squash courts and just fell in love straight away. And then uh, it was only sort of later than normal, sort of 22, 23, where I, with the help of Craig Wapnick, that I realized I could actually might be able to make a living at this. So I went overseas and that's when the, the bug really bit and I decided that that's what I wanted to do. And over the years I've been, I've been very fortunate to be able to travel the world and win a few titles around the world. Um, but Probably one of my best ones is the Commonwealth Games. Uh, I got a bronze medal. Even though it was in the mixed doubles, it was still really, really special. Uh, winning your first nationals is always special. So over the years, I've managed to collect quite a few titles in South Africa, and uh, they've all been special, and mm. hopefully I can still collect a few more. There's plenty more to come. That's right. I mean, you haven't retired yet. No, not yet. Let's take a step back. You talk about doubles. Most people uh, don't uh, barely understand the game of squash. Yeah, you're talking about a double. Let's let's take, let's unpack that for a bit. Okay. What, what is how do you how does one play squash? Give us the basic overview of a squash game, or the dimensions of a squash court as an example. All right. Well, roughly the the court's just under six meters wide and just under ten meters long. Um, it's a box. You can't get out. Once you're in, you're in. And it's very similar. I know you've got a boxing chap coming on. It's very similar to that. You're always fighting for position. You're looking for gaps. You're looking for openings to hit. And at the same time, you've got to vary from defense to attack. Strategy plays a big part. But for the basic players that play, the majority of guys that play, it's just a great workout. 45 minutes, you're in, you're out, and you just don't get a better workout. And, and, and the key for me in, in squash is, is controlling that T. Because if you don't control that T, you lost. You're, you're running. You're the one that's running. If you're not on the T, you're the one that's running. And, and, the, and that's essentially what makes squash so exciting is the fact that you have to move to off the tee or get your opponent off the tee to get to the ball. I Great. mean, and there's a, a range of, 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 of shots that you can play. I mean, most people don't even understand. When you talk about a boast, they say, uh, what do you mean? Exactly. It boasts, trickle boasts, reverse angles, corkscrews. You know, all, all the shots are there. And you just have to play the correct one at the correct time. Mm. And the nice thing about squash is, you know, if you've got two guys who are beginners, they will have a great game. The same as two guys who are professional players. They'll have a great game. Yeah. And there are various ways to handicap players. So it doesn't matter what the level, you can have a great game. So, I understand that. So, so how do you play double squash? Right, so there's obviously four in a court. Yeah. Uh, the international way of playing doubles, the court is probably almost six feet wider. So it's much wider. But you play similar rules. You have somebody on the right-hand wall, somebody on the left-hand wall and the teams have to play alternate not the players so you can have two guys hitting down the one wall goes cross court then the other two guys hitting it there so because the court's so wide it's there's a lot of gaps to play and so it's very physical but locally you know there's a lot of players play doubles in south africa but they play on a singles court mm. which makes it different yeah. uh, a little bit more dangerous which is why in doubles you have to wear eyewear uh, that's part of the rules you can't play without it mm which is a good thing. And yeah, you just you play like you would in singles, except it's, it's far more sociable. Um, and very competitive, I would assume as well, because I mean- you, uh, Once you get higher, it gets very competitive. Also with the international doubles, um, when you play single squash, you play on a 19 inch tin. When you play doubles, locally, you'll try and play on a 17 inch tin. And I know internationally, they're messing around with a 12 inch tin, because the rallies just go on too long. Mm. When I played in the Commonwealth Games, the, the average match was just over two hours. Sure. So they're really trying to reduce that for and the spectators and the players. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know, the tin is that, that red line at the bottom that Correct. you're not allowed to hit below. That's right. 
Because most people don't understand when you say you hit the tin. They're like, yes. what do you mean? That's right. It makes a big noise. Uh, uh, so you know you've hit the tin. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Rodney, I mean, uh, having won an SA title, what does that feel like? Oh, it's fantastic. It's, uh, you know, winning the SA Nationals, it's, it's probably one of the more emotional tournaments that you can win. Everybody wants to mm. win it. Uh, we have players coming who play on the world circuit. If they come back once, they'll come back for nationals. Um, so it's just, it's a truly, it's one to win. You know, you can win all the others, but if you don't win nationals, you haven't really won anything. And you've not arrived as a player. Exactly. <laughs> and there's been a lot of great players who haven't. Yeah. So it, it, it means something to everybody. And, and it's hard work to get to that final above everything else. I mean, those tournaments take on lots of energy, lots of time. Yeah, you play five, five matches yeah. during the week. You know, there's, sometimes they have a day off, sometimes they don't. Uh, the draws change, but you know, as the games evolved, you know, when I was sort of 15, 20 years ago, just starting out on the tour, your first two rounds were relatively easy. You were playing guys who were second league, but now, you know, first round you're playing guys who are con probably consider themselves full-time players. Yeah, and, and and that's an interesting concept is that squash has now become almost a full-time full-time code of sport and a profession for some guys. Very much so, yeah. You know, for me, there's a distinction between a full-time player and a professional player. Mm. Uh, a full-time player is somebody who would base themselves in South Africa. They'd play all the tournaments, but they'd yeah. be coaching. Yeah. They'd be supplementing their income with other forms of mm. work. Whereas a pro is someone like Steve Coppinger, who's out there and squashes what he's doing. He's traveling the world circuit. He's up to 14 in the world now. You know, to me, he's, he's a true professional player. And I think... A lot of kids need to realize that until they're doing that, they're not really a professional player. They, they're a full-time player, and we need those guys because that's the bread and butter of the sport. They're putting back every day. They're coaching the next generation. But sometimes some of those guys need to, need to take a chance and get out there. Absolutely. But, but that is, is the hard work, is, is going onto that international circuit and playing there. I mean, you're giving up everything, and you're living literally some guys from hand to mouth trying just to, just to survive because if you don't, yeah make the top 16, you're not going to get paid in, that, in those tournaments. Exactly. There's a whole big circle of, you know, in, in Europe, they have a really great league mm. system. Because everything's so close, you can be based in England and you can play Dutch league, you can play German league, you can play three different leagues in England, you know. So, and that's what you get paid for. But there's a downside to that. You play too much league, you're not training enough, and then you use that money to go on tour. Yeah. So there's a catch-22, but it, it takes something to do that. And I think it's something that the players, they need to, they need to do it. It's a, it's a fine line. Yeah. Rodney, someone of your caliber has now decided to plow back, which is what all of us should be doing. Tell us some of the, the development stuff that you've been involved in out in Fishuk. In Fishuk, we started uh, a, good couple of, a good couple of months now, probably four or five months. Uh, we decided that... You know, as a squash professional at a club, as a head pro, uh, we needed to do something. Uh, coaching all the members and their kids, and it's all, it's all very well, but we're not, we need to do more. So along with uh, Teresa uh, Latigen, we decided to start this academy, and with the backing of the club, they give us free courts. Um, we decided we'll send an email to a couple of schools, and we'll see what happens. And on a Friday, for just for one hour, we, we got like 15 kids from Massey and Ocean View, and uh, they came, some of them no shoes, raggedy clothes. The teacher in charge, she just said, right, who wants to go, and they arrived. And we got a ball machine from Western Province Squash, which is, which is great, it really helps the shoulder, so you don't have to hit so many yeah. balls. We got a couple of the members just volunteering, a couple of the, the other coaches at the club, Steve Coppinger's mom, you know, everybody decided that they, they wanted to help. Mm. We sent out a message to the club member saying we need old rackets to some of the lady members. If, you, if your kids have finished with their shoes or if you finished with their shoes, because it doesn't help bringing a size 11 shoe. It's not going to fit anymore. Exactly. And we had a great response. Western Province also gave us a load of rackets uh, with Cioli, with a mm. development program that she's running. So pretty quick, we had enough equipment for everybody. Uh, a lot of the rackets are cracked, but they're still usable. So that's what we use. And we said we'd run six weeks. And then we finished the first six weeks and we said, okay, guys, we're going to take three, four weeks break and we're going to come back again and we'll review. 
and the next Friday we're sitting at the club and they all arrive. And we're like, no, we haven't booked courts. We haven't done that. Said, so no, much for the break. They're coming every Friday. Nice. And they've been coming every Friday since. Rodney, how do people get hold of uh, Fisher Squash Club or yourself? Um, Fisher Squash Club info at FHSC, Fisher Squash Club, .co.za, and that'll go to the whole committee and we'll all get it. Rodney, thank you for your time. Thank you for your input that you make in people's lives and for being a role model. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Let's take an ad break and when we come back, we'll chat Liverpool Football Academy. See you now.